I was going to try and go super Miss Marple with this video, I'd definitely try and knit something while I answer the questions, because I swear she does all of her best detective work while knitting. But I'm not good at knitting, so it would just be me sitting here looking at this, at some knitting like this, and then not saying anything because I'd be too focused on what I was trying to do. And that doesn't sound like a very interesting video to me. everyone, Rosie here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is the Miss Marple tag. It would have been perfect for March Mystery Madness, but I only found out about it at the very end of March when I was tagged by Hannah of Hannah's Books, and the original is by James Holder. Those will both, of course, be linked down below, so make sure you go check them out. And if you've been around for a while, you will know that I prefer Miss Marple to Poirot. She is my preferred Christie detective so far, so I obviously couldn't pass up an opportunity to do this tag. Prompt or question one. The murder at the vicarage. A book about or set in a small town or village. I thought that this was going to be easy to find an answer to, but it was surprisingly difficult. And I've landed on A Tale for the Time Being by Ruth Azeki. This is a dual perspective novel half of which focuses on a teenage girl in Tokyo, which, to be clear, that's not the small town, obviously. But this teenage girl is, you know, dealing with teenage stuff, bullying, feeling like an outcast, and she's coping with this by trying to document the life of her grandmother, who's a pretty extraordinary woman. And then the other half of the story follows a woman who lives on a small island, I think off the west coast of Canada. I'm pretty sure it was Canada, not in the Pacific Northwest. Anyway, she lives on a small island on the west coast of North America, and after the 2011 tsunami, debris starts to wash up on like a beach near her home, and she discovers this young girl's diary or something and somehow gets pulled into her story. I don't remember the details because it's been a very long time since I read this. Five years, I know that's not actually a long time, but let me go with it. But I really, really loved it. I remember being really blown away when I read it. So I definitely, one, want to read more Ruth Azeki because I know she's written some other books and I've heard some really good things about them. And I think I want to reread this one as well. Prompt two, The Body in the Library, a book with a pivotal scene set in a library. I absolutely adored The Library at Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. This is a very strange book. I think it maybe borders on horror, but I don't know if it actually does because when I was reading it, it didn't feel at all horror. It was just when I was looking at the description to like refresh my memory that it said it was kind of horror-esque. So I don't know. Anyway, it follows a group of, I think it's like 12 or maybe 13 adults who were all adopted by this mysterious man that they called Father when they were children. And they were raised in his very strange house and learned a lot of things, like a lot of things in his very strange library, except now he's disappeared and everything is simultaneously sort of exploding and imploding. Every time I look at this book or think about this book, I check to see if Hawkins has written anything else and he still hasn't, so hopefully someday. Or maybe I just need to reread this one, I don't know. Maybe I should. Prompt three, The Moving Finger, a book in which the protagonist is trolled, harassed, subject to a rumor campaign, or falsely accused. I mean, this feels like a bit of a cop-out, but I'm going with Hidden Figures by Margot Lee Shetterly. This is, of course, the story of the black women who worked at NASA during the space race doing computation work, which at that period in time didn't mean working with computers, that was coming in just towards the end of the period, but it meant actually doing the math that allowed them to, you know, plan trajectories and all that sort of thing. And this will not surprise you, but they faced a lot of sexist and racist harassment and bullying both through their jobs and in society in general. Question four. A murder is announced. A book in which there is a sympathetic depiction of a Marxist or equivalent. I promise I tried to find another book for this, but I guess I need to read more books with Marxist characters in them or something? Because I have chosen Death at Victoria Dock by Carrie Greenwood. We have multiple anarchist slash Marxist characters in this book. I mean, arguably there's one of the main side characters throughout the whole series is, I can't remember what exactly his political views are, but they're somewhere aligned with Marxism. And he's, but in this one, we also have several of the characters who just show up for this book, who are anarchists and Marxists and portrayed very positively. Some of them also aren't because they're bank robbers with machine guns, but it's very much depicted that there are many sides and that there are some very good people with 
very good ideas in that group. Prompt five, they do it with mirrors, a book in which performance plays a major role. I know I've used this for a tag recently, but I have to go with Space Opera by Catherine M. Valenti. This is, as I've described it before, basically Eurovision in space with humanity's continued existence at stake. Where can you go wrong with that? And as you would expect, performance plays a very large role. Also, maybe if I talk about this book enough, I'll finally actually get other books by Valente and read them because I'm pretty sure that I'm going to love them and I just need to actually get around to them. Question six, a pocket full of rye. A book based upon or inspired by a nursery rhyme, fairy tale, myth, or other work of fiction. This is another one that I read a while ago, but I'm going with Hot Lead, Cold Iron by Ari Marmel. This is your classic 1930s noir detective type story, except our intrepid P.I. Mick Oberon is Faye, and currently on the outs with the local Faye court, which is of course causing him some issues in his life. I don't remember this book being based on any particular, you know, specific fairy tale or specific myth, but it's based on a lot of the concepts that appear in fairy tales and in myths about fairies or the fae, and is very, very fun. I want to read the two sequels that I have left to read very soon so I can confirm whether they are as good as I can remember or not. Prompt seven. 450 from Paddington, a book in which more than two suitors pursue the main protagonist. I've chosen This Is How You Lose Her by Juno Diaz. I'm not sure it technically fills, fills this prompt, but it's a sort of semi-connected series of short stories, I think is the best way to describe it, that all center on one man and his many, many ways that he fucks up his relationships with the women in his life. So sometimes he's being pursued, sometimes he's pursuing, often he's doing both at once, but there are definitely a lot of love interests and different types of relationship in this book. Prompt eight, the mirror cracked from side to side, a book about about a changing world. I maybe could have picked something that was about, you know, deep and meaningful about changes in our world, but I'm going with Foundation by Isaac Asimov because I just read one of its sequels, so it's really on my mind. Foundation is a novel that was written in the 1950s by Isaac Asimov, who was writing about this concept that he's developed called the Foundation, which is, we've got a huge galactic empire, we're way, way, way in the distant future, we've had a huge galactic empire that's been built up, and now it's collapsing. And there's a man within this empire who says, I know what I need to do. I'm going to set up a foundation and I'm going to send talented, intelligent, bright scientists and engineers and that type of person to this planet and they're going to preserve all of the knowledge that we've built up. So for example, when most of the galaxy loses its ability to generate nuclear power, the foundation still has that. And they're gonna use this knowledge to help a new galactic empire rise up faster and bring us back to the level of civilization that we're currently at faster. And the first novel, Foundation, is about the first couple centuries of this planet and this foundation. Of course, there's a lot going on through those centuries. It's a long time period, there's a lot going on in the space around them, so they're having different interactions with their neighbors. They keep hitting different crises when they have to sort of overcome some particular challenge and that often changes the way things work in their society. It's really good. Prompt nine, a Caribbean mystery, a book about or set in the Caribbean. So clearly I have a big gap in my reading and I need to read more books about and set in the Caribbean and by Caribbean authors because I couldn't really find anything which was kind of alarming. I'm going with the, A Duke, The Lady and a Baby by Vanessa Riley. This is a romance novel in which the heroine is from the Caribbean, although all of the action takes place in England. And I will link my trying romance video up here if you wanna know more about that one. Prompt 10, at Bertram's Hotel, a book about artifice. I think I've mentioned this one once or twice recently, although not only the specific book, and that's The Counterfeit Heiress by Tasha Alexander. This is the ninth Lady Emily mystery novel, which is a series of mysteries set in the Victorian era. In this book, we have a woman who's murdered at a ball, and when Lady Emily starts to investigate, she realizes that the woman is not actually the heiress she was claiming to be, but an actress impersonating the heiress. So now she's got to figure out, you know, was the actress the target? Was it the heiress? Where's the real heiress? What's going on with all this? I'm not going to say anything more about the plot, obviously, because it's a mystery, and I think if it sounds interesting, you should read it and figure it all out and be surprised like I was, but it was a really good book, and there's definitely a lot of artifice in it. Question 11, Nemesis, a book featuring a quest. 
It's been a while since I talked about The Radium Girls by Kate Moore. This is a non-fiction book about the girls who were painting glow-in-the-dark numbers onto watch dials, starting sort of around the First World War and then in that first couple decades of the 20th century, basically. Of course, radioactive paint was made with radium. And in order to get super tiny little numbers on the watch dials, they had to basically like lick their paintbrushes. I think it was called pointing. So they'd lick their paintbrush to get a super fine point, dip it in the radium paint, paint a couple numbers, and then lick again. It probably will not come as a shock to you to find out that they started developing horrible, horrible diseases and cancers as a result of this. Just, you know, awful, awful jaw cancer things. It was terrible. Now you might be asking yourself, what does this have to do with the quest? Well, they didn't just take this. You know, when they started getting terribly sick and dying, they didn't just sort of go, well, guess this, this is it. I'm done for it. They really took the fight to their employers and they really, really worked so hard and fought so hard as they were literally dying to get fair compensation for their damages and also to change the working standards going forward so that other girls wouldn't suffer the same way. And as you will imagine, their employers did everything possible to deny that this was a workplace injury, that this was at all a problem, that they were at all responsible, and it was many, many years of legal battles to get them to take any sort of responsibility. So if that's not a quest, I don't know what is. And finally, 12. Sleeping Murder. A book in which the past haunts the present. I'm going nonfiction again with Lowborn, Growing Up, Getting Away, and Returning to Britain's Poorest Towns by Carrie Hudson. This is a book all about poverty in modern Britain that's sort of part examination of the issue in general and part a memoir of the author's experience with growing up in poverty in Britain, how she managed to get out of that cycle of poverty, and then her reflections as an adult about that experience and about how that continues to affect her. Because of course, even once she's no longer actively living in poverty, those experiences that she had don't go away. And that's the case for most people who grew up in that sort of circumstance. It's not like if you're a child growing up in poverty and then all of a sudden as an adult you're well off, all of those negative experiences never happened. It would be a dark take on this prompt, but I think it's a really interesting and important one. And if you haven't read this book, another one that I highly recommend checking out. All right, those are all the prompts. This has been a really fun tag and I should tag some people. First, I'm going to tag Lady Jane of Lady Jane Books because even though I know she likes the dark and scary and horrifying thrillers and horror novels, her personality just makes me feel like she would get on with Miss Marple, even if the books are probably way too tame for her tastes. Also, she actually does knit. I'm also going to tag Jeremy Fee because he's been reading some Miss Marple lately and I think he likes Christy in general so would love to see his answers to this tag. And finally I'm going to tag Emrita of Emrita by the Book because she is a big Christy fan. I'm not sure if she prefers Poirot or Marple. I know she really likes the Poirot TV show but maybe she'll tell us some things she likes about Miss Marple books as well. And I mean she always has the best answers for like name a book style tags, so I just need to know what she's going to say for all these prompts. And of course, if you would like to do this tag, consider yourself tagged. I would love to see your answers as well. Make sure to let me know down below if you do do this video so I can come check it out. And also, let me know down below. Do you like Miss Marple? Do you like Christy in general? And if you've read both Marple and Poirot, let me know down below. Who wins with you? All right. As always, if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. If you would like to see more of my videos, please hit subscribe and thank you for watching.